Hey guys, how y'all doing? Uh, this is Evan Layton with H Town Happy Hour. Derek Dale Telebi with H Town Happy Hour, number one podcast in the world. In the world, baby, let them know. And we have two very special guests for y'all today. This is uh, James Schneider. I'm a digital creator, filmmaker, and real estate agent, uh, specializing in apartment locating here in Houston. Nice. I'm Carla Fresquez. I'm a digital creator, influencer, and real estate agent. And I work with James on a team, and we work in apartment locating. And we're nice. so happy to be here, guys. Thanks for awesome. having us, guys. Hey, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you all for coming in, man. Thank you all for coming in. You know, so uh, so say you all were doing digital marketing for a long time, influencing and things of that nature. What um, What's sort of like your main genre? What is the main things that you all work with? Like as far as like your videos and content, things of that nature. Um, I would say, uh, you know, once we got into, you know, doing what we were doing with digital marketing, video production, things like that, um, it was uh, initially it started with uh, small businesses where we were mm -hmm. uh, in New Mexico. So that's where we started at. And then it started branching into brands um, that we worked with on Instagram. They needed yeah. a, either a product video or a video business card um, for their brand. So they would either yeah. send us products or they needed like we worked with GoDaddy and they needed something that they had a campaign. Mm -hmm. um, nice. And so there's 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 a, like a, an overview or there's like an initiative that they're trying to push. And so we would work with them back and forth. Kind of like they have an objective. Gotcha. Because okay. they wanted to push small business mm -hmm. back, yeah. back, you know, uh, last year. So GoDaddy was, was sending y'all clients? You no, like so, a... so they were our client. Oh, wow. How about so, that? Huge. Yeah. How about that? Well, we yeah. work with them as uh, influencers. So with our yeah. platforms on Instagram with James and me, they basically, we worked with them as influencers. So last year, the first time we worked with them was um, during COVID. And it was when everything shut down in March, April. Mm -hmm. So we did a campaign with them where we basically just kind of, it was giving tips to other small business owners yeah. of how to still stay open and work from home and just kind of how to Shift to creative. the virtual world yeah, too. Yeah, because we were learning last year. You know, we, we moved to Houston last year in From March. New Mexico. Literally that week we got here the next week they shut everything down so wow. we're like yo we can't go and we can't wow. um you know, what a hurdle business. We're what new. A hurdle. yeah so it was it was a wild time and we just had to shift to to doing more online work which we already kind of were doing but shifting more of that and then you know helping them promote their initiative to help other what people. what uh, brought y'all to houston uh, you know, guys, I did a lot of research. We were we were in New Mexico first, um, you know, and just to, I guess, to clarify things. So, you know, I met Carla. I was in California. She was in uh, Delaware when we met. We had a bunch of mutual friends, and um, I wanted her to move to California where I was at. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she wanted me to move to, to, to <laughs> Wilmington. And that's not happening, is it? <laughs> that's wait, not going to fly. Wait, so, so, yeah, exactly. Did y'all meet online? <laughs> What's that? Did y'all originally meet online? Yeah. Through Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's awesome. That's a real yeah. story right there. Okay. You know he, what I mean? He said he liked my hair, got a DM, and I was like, well, gosh, sure. <laughs> You gotta shoot the You're shot. You're looking yeah. fly, yeah. girl. You're looking fly. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I had the nice side shave. I had a cool side shave back then, and he said I liked my hair, and I was like, okay, he looks mm -hmm. cool. You know, we were following each other for a while, and we just we just started talking, got on the phone, FaceTime. We were talking for a couple months, and then we met in real life, and yeah. just it off from there wow yeah that's beautiful yeah it was that cool. really is okay that so, really so, is. so what brought you to houston exactly <laughs> <laughs> that was just i had to ask because that was a good well yeah, i do have a sister here so she lives here with her boyfriend and she's been here what like three years almost i think so yeah. so we did have that connection and we came to visit like a year before we moved here but then there was also a lot of research into houston which you can explain what were some of the biggest components that brought y'all around yeah so first off i was looking at tax-free states you know, because yeah. we're entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? You got to think yeah. of that. Right, um, for sure. So I looked at that. So what is it? We, what do we have? Uh, Nevada. You have Florida. Mm -hmm. There's a couple Texas, other ones. And that's a, Texas. Nevada, Florida, Texas. The ones there's, I only a, there's only a few states that are still around for the uh, sole proprietor business model. Mm -hmm. Other than that, they're kind of like, hey, we're going to tax you until you give up. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I've been to, uh, before we came to see her sister... God, I'm trying to think. I don't think we've ever been to Houston, right? No, it was the first time. That was our first yeah. time ever ever being in Houston. Um, and it just related to me the most. I don't know. The, I love the culture about it. Mm -hmm. um, just Dallas, the vibe, man. Every time you fly into Houston, for me, it's just like there's something about it that just says, home. Yeah. 
That's just okay. home for me, you know? And uh, it doesn't matter where else I go. You know, I've traveled plenty. Lived in Washington State for a while. And, you know, like I said, lived in California for a little while. But, I mean, man, there's nothing like it. That, like, just the down south Texas environment. Just the whole atmosphere. Plus the hospitality. Like, Texas, right. Like, southern hospitality, too. You know what else I've noticed? Not many other people do anywhere else. Whenever you get over in traffic and they let you over, people here give that, <laughs> I love that, that that little quick wave. Other than that, it's kind of like you know flipping the bird to most people. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of road rage out there, and Texas is just friendly. I love Houston. I think we also wanted to be to the you know near the coast because we liked it. We love the humidity. I know some people are like, oh, I don't do. Wow, humidity. that's interesting. I like the humidity because James is from the East Coast. I lived there ten years, so I miss the humidity in New Mexico. And then you know we saw Houston is like some place that we could really grow. Yeah, I love that I love it's it. the most diversity here, yep. which is awesome. Yep. And Houston, I feel like has something for everybody. Yeah. You got the luxury, bougie. You got yeah. the down to earth. <laughs> you can like go do whatever you want, and you can really be so. Diverse. Yeah, it is. I love that. Um, actually, one of one of the architecture architecture firms that uh, the design architects for the Post, uh, she's she they their office is in New York City, and she's always talking about how like everyone in like overseas. She's from she's from Europe. Uh, she just she works for OMA in in New York, but uh, she's always talking about like all the architects talk about like he, uh, Texas is like the last frontier. It's like mm -hmm. she's always talking about how like Texas is. It's like it has room to grow. She's she's always saying like California and, and New York, you know, constantly compared to like them, but even like Miami, she says it feels like like they're stagnant. Like there's not like they're set in their ways now. That's true. And and Texas, Houston in specifically too, is is that, that final frontier she's talking about. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. They welcome it here. Yeah. They welcome it. That that yeah. that new idea entrepreneurship. You know, it was funny. I was dealing with, uh, I was working with some clients that were trying to look for, uh, you know, they had the 1031 exchange that they were trying to use and they were trying to, you know, find different opportunities down here with certain cap rates for it. And, uh, you know, they, they asked me at one point to tell them something compelling to well, why they should come down here. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? You want me to tell you something compelling? What wise investor says, you know what I'm gonna take, do with this, uh, this equity, I'm gonna take it and put it back into California. No, they're not. You want to take it somewhere else where they appreciate? Big money, bring it down south. Bring it down south. What wise investor do you know says I'm gonna take my money and invest back into California? It's absolutely crap over there. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. Hey, welcome to Texas, baby. <laughs> it's time happy hour. Just, re just recognize, you know. Uh, so, no, so it's true. Thank how you. did y'all? How, yeah. how, how did y'all kind of get into uh, like the the content creation? How did you get into like uh, videography and photography and stuff? First and foremost, just so, if they don't know, their their fucking photography and videography is amazing. He also does like tutorials and stuff, and they 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 work together as a fucking superpower couple over Thank here. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, I appreciate, yeah, appreciate that. that for sure. Ooh, I mean that's the fun part, to be honest. So you know, a little kind of background history. I can go for me. I worked in the corporate banking finance world. I did like credit risk on mm. the East Coast. I did finance. I even did towards the end of my career in the East Coast was more of like um, design, graphic design. I went to school for video production. So when I met James, we decided to relocate to New Mexico because that's where our, I was raised and, and I have most of my family there. Uh -huh. So we agreed on New Mexico. We moved there and I had a job lined up. I was a marketing manager at a credit union. So cool. I was like, OK, I got a job. Let's move. So we, we did that. And after like a year into the job, uh, me and him were like, we got to start our own business. Like, yeah. we could do this. We could, you know, we could, you know, we know how to, we're learning how to do marketing. We know how to make videos. We were doing, like, YouTube travel vlogs. We mm -hmm. were already creating nice. content just for fun. It wasn't to make money. And we're it like, was just to put it out there just so you can have it. Hey, I'm doing a video log. We're out here and so-and-so. It's freaking hot. We're out of gas. Uh, there's a, there's a, is that an armadillo over there? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It was like just, that. it was cool because James, you know, he loves photography and video and I used to do modeling. So I love to like shoot content. So we can, when we came together on our free time, we would just go create content together. Nice. For fun. He's it's your a cool. You're his muse. Yeah. So it was like, yo, this is fun. So, you know, in my corporate job, you know, he was full time trying to figure things out, you know, as far as like how we could build a business. And we got to a point where we were going on my lunch breaks at my job and we were closing deals with clients that hmm. paid more than what I get paid in two weeks. Wow. And we're like, me and him were like, you know what? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why are you staying here yeah. for this yeah. 13 50 an hour? Yeah. You know what I mean? 
mean, also, yeah. I imagine like, okay, marketing is fun. You know, we 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 prof- we're professionals in marketing and stuff, but I can't imagine marketing for credit finances and stuff. That probably isn't too exciting. So much regulation. <laughs> no. I feel like my creative hat was like Just cut off. I would come up with some like really cool like stuff and then you would have to go through, you know, where they have to, you know, go through just the mm. regulations yeah, a lot and of make red sure tape. the logo. No, you gotta put the interest rates. Yep. And also the asterisks. Equal and don't housing. forget to tell them about the special. Yep. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> if the fine print has to be yeah. certain. So it was a lot of, you know, as a creative you kind of feel like really in this box. And I wanted to just color outside the lines yeah, that's who i am i'm not I, I don't follow the rules i, I just that. color outside the lines and i figure it out sometimes yeah. i win sometimes i don't but there it is that's just how there you know, it is. goes. that's, that's the beauty of uh of achieving man sometimes you win sometimes you lose each side is uh you know equal it's failing forward right you know so, yeah uh, so we you know it was funny the job you know I, we decided all right i'm gonna quit it so I went in that day. James was my getaway car. I put Let's in my go. I put in my notice. I get said, in, baby. We're <laughs> going to Texas. Bobby and Clyde. Bobby and Clyde. Yeah. So he waited for me. I put in my notice. Um, left, and I, you know, then we started our business. And honestly, how we started our business is. I just picked up the phone and started calling local businesses, wow. cold yes. calls. That's wow. what we did. That's how we got clients. That's you just can't be scared. You nope. gotta pick up the phone. Yep. Wow, you really do. So for me, guys, like it's a lost uh, art for most gonna, people. I was gonna ask James, how'd you get yeah. started in like photography and videography? Yeah, so me and Carla are a little, you know, because Carla has, you know, she she's a college graduate. I'm completely self-taught. Mm. You know, I go to I went to the University of YouTube. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right on. You know? Me and you both, brother. So you gotta be you gotta be a little bit of a psycho just going through because there's a lot of crap on YouTube. So you got to find the real stuff. Um, you got to watch a lot of videos, yeah. and then you start to understand. Okay, this these are the actually important people that I'm actually learning stuff from. Right. And, We're putting um, out good content. Right. That you're getting real value from. Yeah. And you actually know what you're talking about, and yeah. you got to test it on your own platform. I can't pitch to a client if I don't know if something works. Yeah. So I got to actually see that. Okay, this actually works, and I could actually get them more whatever. If we're working with a coffee shop or a real estate agent, I know for a fact. I can sell them this product and it will perform for them. So how many real estate agents did y'all do business with until you were like, F this, get your license. (laughs) (laughs) How many people did y'all do business with who were like, hey, make this video over here. I'm gonna get $10,000 off this, but you're gonna get buck 50. You know what I mean? How many times did that happen until you were like, we're getting our license, we're gonna do this? Yeah, we worked with one for for a couple years. Um, She was actually one of our first clients and we worked with her up until we left New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um, So she was great because she was very open to whatever that we would pitch to her and she would go with it and she did great. And at the beginning, I could tell she didn't really understand where where it was going because she had pretty much like a weekly show. And I was like, listen, you need like your own show um, where you're talking about either the market or you're talking about the area that you were selling homes in. Mm -hmm. You know, people just need to see your face every single week. And it wasn't until she got stopped in, in, at a gas station in Denver where someone seen her videos from New Mexico. Was, oh, wow. And she's like, that was like, blew her away. Crazy. And she's like, okay, I'm sold. I'm sold, this yeah. is working. This, this is, is like a year and a half into it though. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and she understood that she needs to be in front of the camera talking. Yeah. You know, we would do Facebook Lives to, to, to sell home. She had a new home. I'm gonna follow her through, and it's a video listing, and she's talking about it, and it's live. And she would have like half this town watching her at her lives. You know, it would compound over time, yeah, more and sure. more people. For sure. And you got to show up. So, so that was that. But then we started working with a. It's probably one of the biggest media companies in New Mexico, and we were like a contractor for them. So mm-hmm. we would do either their editing. Uh, we would always do their editing, and then we would do videos for them as well. So, the, whatever work their team couldn't do, mm-hmm. um, we would take on. Yeah. And, um, and perfect it. And it was like video tours, like real estate video tours for different clients. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, I kind of want to circle back though and, and kind of let you finish that thought because I just out of my pure own interest. Um, so you're talking about the YouTube and stuff and how you got kind of started and everything. Kind of kind of keep diving into that. Finish so, that thought. Yeah, it's funny, Derek. So, <clears throat> um, you know, guys, I, God, I started, I started a clothes line when I was like 20. 324. Yeah. It was based on like, uh, God, I'm trying to think how to explain this. It, it was really t-shirts and I started doing some cut and sew stuff. I got into a, a couple stores, which was really cool. Some, uh, so it was all about car culture. Yeah. Um, car? Know, like, 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 uh, um, vehicle. Yeah. Car culture. Vehicles. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. God, I'm trying to think the best way to like really put it, but it's like, 
you know, if Mercedes and like Supreme had, you know, a yeah. baby. Yeah. Um, Cause it was streetwear first, but I always wanted to go, like if you guys, I remember, okay, so when I was 21, I went to uh, a trip with my family to London mm -hmm. and I saw Porsche design, had a store and it was just, it was just clothes. You didn't buy, you couldn't buy a Porsche there, but you could it buy- It was just Porsche designed uh, attire. Inspired clothes or accessories. You could buy like a weekend duffel bag. Mm -hmm. You could buy a watch. And I was like, man, there's something there. There's car culture is is the passion for it is so strong. People love their cars. It's a real thing. From lowriders to Ferraris, you big know what souped I mean? up trucks too. Exactly. Yeah. People love yeah. cars, you know. So there's 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 something there. So I started with that, and then I moved into my own. Uh, I had a blog, which was really about like travel and lifestyle, and it was just me traveling and just kind of like. I, I did a lot of writing in it and I would post it on Facebook and this um, owner of a magazine uh, saw it and he's like, would you like to, you know, start out and just, you know, uh, come to a couple of events. We'll kind of meet each other, see if we vibe. And if we do, I'll send you on some assignments. Nice. So he sent me on some in New York and I would do like hotel reviews. Okay. Uh, there. And... At this point, aren't they like uh, you're like five by five hotel rooms? Like, aren't they like super small out there? So it's funny you say They're that. They're entirely small. Evan, my first one I did um, was the Thompson, which isn't doesn't exist anymore. I think it's 60 <laughs> hotels owns them now. But I went to the Thompson, and he calls me when I'm there. He's like, hey, like, how do you like the room? And he's waiting for me to be like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I've been to ones in Atlantic City that are like double the size of this. <laughs> like the, the front, like the door you open in barely misses the bed. And this is like $600 a night. This garbage wow. can of a room is barely wow. making uh, ends meet for us right it's now. It's nice for the size, but yeah. it's really small, you know. So... So anyway, that's New York City, and I started doing some other ones, and then I started doing um, um, pretty much an automotive journalist. So I would I would fly. So my first one, I went to Atlanta, and it was for Ashton Martin, and I got picked up in a limo at wow. the airport. Snazzy. So all this is mostly just writing at this point and typing, writing articles, not really. My visual job yet. is really writing. Yeah. And then, but Beautiful. I would do photography too, yeah. and I was very much an amateur photographer. Mm -hmm. um, I actually went out before my first assignment, and I spent. Five grand, three grand on the body, two grand on the lens. I'm like, I need a real camera. Yeah, me and him did the same thing when we started H on up here. And didn't know how to use a camera, just went and picked one up. I really didn't either. Nope. I really didn't either. But That's I how you learn. Everyone starts that way. But you just have to get after it. You just have to go out there and put yourself on the line. And if it happens, cool. If not, I still did it. I still went out there and did my best. And then as you slowly start to do these videos over and over, you're like, that was good. That was good. I can do better there. I can do better there. I can improve this. You know, and uh, and the next thing you know, you know we uh, here we are. You so know? Aston Martin limo. Yeah, I mean I was mind blown, guys. I worked at a casino at the time. I worked at a casino in Pennsylvania. Uh, lived in Jersey, and so most of the guys there were full time uh, automotive journalists. This is what they did. They were writers. Mm -hmm. So I'm meeting all these guys, and it was just like so impressionable. I mean, I just thought it was so cool. Um, when you go to these riding drives, I, I did one for uh, Nice, no Infinity, Audi. Um, Nissan and Infiniti, then Ashton Martin, Hyundai, bunch of different ones. So you're flying out each time. They wine and dine you. They go to these like really nice restaurants. Oh. It's like a private room just for all the journalists mm. and the PR from that car company. And uh, it was just, you know, it was super cool. And that's upper echelon type work, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's upper echelon type work for sure. So, so it was just writing and I was trying to do photography too because it was really in that world, it's either you're a writer or you're a photographer. So I was doing both. So you were trying to combine the two. Okay. I would really write from my my photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would kind of like document the whole thing. Absolutely. And then write from my experience from it. Um, and then and then I moved to Vegas and I started working for a magazine in Vegas, essentially doing the same thing. I was I was an intern at first there, mm -hmm. and I was working at a casino there. I, I worked I worked at the magazine for free. And then eventually um, I did a story, I think for Hyundai, and then they wanted me as a freelance to do, because they had no car contacts. Yeah. But they wanted that. Yeah. So I did that, guys. And then um, when me and Carla got together, I wanted to start a YouTube channel, kind of combining everything that I yeah. did really in my blog in video form. Right. You know, and, um, and then we started doing video and I really was, you know, just learning it. Learning Premiere, yep. you know, it was a nightmare. My first couple of videos, it's, it's so you don't know much, frame rate, you yeah, don't know any of this stuff. You, know you just and that's the thing, it's, it's infinite too. Like 
I know so much about it. I can chop up a video. I can edit it, all that. But it's still so much more I don't know. Like, it, it, not just Premiere, but Photoshop, all of them, InDesign, Illustrator, all of them, they're, they're like some of the most clutch tools, and they're like the, the opportunities are endless in those, in those programs. I'll watch a tutorial and be like, how did I not know you could do that? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've come to learn to, I stopped searching through Premiere if I don't know something, I just watch a YouTube video. I'm like, how do I do, I, immediately, if I can't figure, if the second I realize, oh, I can't figure this out, I watch a YouTube video, 30 seconds later, or a minute, couple minutes later, I know how to do exactly that. If I'd want to get rid of some clicking noises in, in the sound, if I want to brighten up, uh, uh, brighten up uh, the, the video, anything like that, it's just. Click in the pen. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Really? Because right. our freaking drunk interview, our mic is all messed up. So <laughs> it, it, it's always it's always clicky. I, I yeah, yeah, nothing on these. We're good. The genius never stops in the technological world. Yeah. So yeah. you kind of taught right. yourself Premiere and stuff. You know, guys. Uh, yes, and you know, it was just following my heart. I just never wanted to work a nine to five that I hated. And I know so many people that just got stuck in it, and I don't judge them because life's hard. You got to do what you got to do. And I worked plenty of jobs that I didn't want to work. But any, at any point that I could get out of that and be remotely close to what I love doing, you know what I mean? It just makes life that much easier. Yeah. And so that what that's what, you know, especially when I met Carla, Carla wanted to do the same thing. You know what I mean? And I was wanted to be with someone that was going in the same direction as me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So touch on the real estate world a little bit with you guys. I remember you said you were also doing stuff with apartments too. How is that tying in also? Because, uh, you know, as real estate agents, you can still get, you know, you can get compensated for working with apartments, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're right now, you know, starting in real estate, we are focusing only on apartments and just apartment locating. Nice. So our service is 100% free, which is awesome. So anyone that needs an apartment, we can put together a list, go tour, find the best apartment for you, and it's free. The apartments mm -hmm. pay us. So yeah. That's awesome, and we love that. You know, so our clients don't have to. You know. Well, it's service. funny because a lot of the times they they don't realize that you know if you come to me, I can reach out to them and do all the hard little legwork for you. Don't go searching for all that crap because for one, they're going to hit you over the head with all these different fees. Also, just let me do it. It's my work. You know what I mean? It's right up my alley. And then yeah. plus, you don't have to get given any of this uh, real estate jargon by these other guys who are trying to just, you know, get you, get you for an extra $50 application fee or something. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Evan, it's, it's, a free, it's a free service. Yeah. So one, it doesn't cost you anything. Right. That's one. Two, I remember my own personal experience when me and Carla were looking for our own apartment in Houston. Ooh, it was, was a nightmare. Uh, a lot of these, especially the really nice apartments, even ones that are like um, more considered like luxury too. Mm -hmm. um, and there's even, there's even ones that are really nice and they're not even that expensive. They're just not really good or very savvy at marketing. So a Google search will not pull them up. Right. Um, a lot of the very mediocre and relatively expensive apartments show up. They're yeah. the ones that are really doing the work on SEO. Mm -hmm. And so you're not finding that place that you want to. We know about them. Yeah. Right, we know right, the right, deals right. that they have. We right. know that you're going to get your first three months for free. Right. And you're yeah. not going to pay right. an app fee or an admin fee or any of those things. Only that extra junk that they just try to throw on top, you know? Well, and I mean, it's funny because a lot of the times, you know, sometimes you, you help out people with that and they have no idea that, like, I'm completely on your side. Yeah. And, and y'all don't have to compensate me for it. I'm gonna be, right. I'm gonna have your back, and then they're gonna take care of it for you. Right. So that's why. They, and then sometimes they even pay out like 150 percent of of, of 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 first month's rent sometimes to the to the realtors. And I guess I'm telling out a little too much secrets of this uh, real estate world. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean that's that's actually a key key point. Like that's very important. Like but a lot of people don't understand that about like apartment locating services and stuff. Is is it it, it costs. The, the client, the person looking for an apartment, nothing. The apartment compensates the the, the realtor. Right. So I mean that it's it's actually very important. I think it, I think because I had no idea that happened until I met someone that ran apartment locating services. I had never. I had always just went to the apartments myself, drove around like you said. And none of them are going to tell you if you just show up. I'm looking for an apartment. And they're going to be like, oh, we'll give you first three months free. You gotta you gotta yeah. ask for it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Absolutely. So. Well, the other, I want to touch on what Evan said because it's a good point. And like, you know, yeah, there's some of them that do pay 150%, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking about something before we got started. Um, but when we would work with our clients in digital marketing, you know, it always felt good when you made a video for a client and they're like, you know, I love the video. That, finding out their needs. Finding out their needs. But that's a good feeling, but nothing's better than after the video performed 
and actually made that that uh, business money yeah. mm-hmm. and gave them reach and right. they got them new customers. That's that's a way better feeling. Yeah, that's solidified right. value. When you accomplish the goal, like when yeah. you execute. So yeah. going to apartment locating, um, just because one place pays 150%, if mm-hmm. I put them in an apartment they're not happy with, that's just gonna bite me in the ass right. later. Well, and that, well, and that's even another thing. Whenever you know, I talk to people, say if they get a pre-approval letter of like you know four hundred thousand dollars, I tell them off the jump, you don't have to use all of it. You don't have to. I was like, there's, you know, there are plenty of homes around the 250 range that I'm mm-hmm. sure will fit more than your needs. And so that usually is a breath of fresh air for people that I'm working with, knowing that I'm not trying to, you know, give me all your money, kid. You know what I mean? So we had a client this week. I was talking to him back and forth, and, you know, he just didn't have a budget for where he wanted to live. He's like, I got to live here, and this is my budget. And after searching everything, because, I, I, you know, to me, it's just like I'm going to find this place this person's right. looking for. And I'm like, you know what? Right now, with where the market's at, you're better off just staying where you're at. Mm. You know, because mm. I, I, if you're happy there, like, you either got to come up a little bit more. Like, if you can meet me here, I right. can find you a place. Right. You know what I mean? With what you're looking for. But if not, just stay where you're at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. and our, our goal is to really save our clients money and time. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, if I know I'm helping these clients and getting them where they want to be and I'm saving them money and time, I'm winning. You know, right. it, sometimes it pays, sometimes it doesn't. But it's just saving them money and time. And, you know, we have always, you know, as a small business, when we did video production, we always took pride in doing our best and giving our 100% and having our clients give us five-star reviews and be happy. Even if it's doing the extra work or doing whatever it takes. And the biggest payoff, what, the biggest yeah. payoff about it is a good referral. Absolutely. That's the biggest payoff of yep. all of it. Whenever you do a job well done and they say, hey, my friend, let me tell you about these guys who helped me. Yes. And then you should use them. And that's yeah. that's really the biggest payoff is whenever you get a solid referral. Absolutely. For me. Absolutely. So let me, let me can, can I guess, Carla, uh, describe the feeling y'all had, um, actually both of y'all, it, making the transition of doing video work and stuff for other people coming to the realization, hey, why don't we just do it for ourselves? We're selling them. Why don't we sell ourselves and do the same thing? What, what was the feeling? Yeah, really, Derek, it, it started, you know, it started when we started doing, you know, working with the, um, you know, real estate agents. And honestly, the feeling started when you walked into the listing for me and James. You walk in, you know, we are renting and we're a small business starting out, living deal to deal. You walk into these homes, especially the million dollar homes, and you walk in, you're like, this is beautiful. I've never been in a million dollar home. And that feeling of just abundance and just the feeling of just being in a home and seeing just feeling it and it's thinking like one day i'm gonna own a home like this mm. and thinking okay well you know we we did it and i'm so glad that we did do that i'm glad we didn't just jump straight to real estate because we we learned so many things about Absolutely. it during the time but once we got to the point where we're like you know we really want to do this and you know transition into that you know we we uh you know did everything that we needed to do but it was really coming down to time versus money and you know for example you know with our when we worked when we did video production we would sell the video we would then go create the video come back edit it for hours market the video right now real estate we help people find apartments we don't have to go build an apartment we're gonna you know put them in the best apartment for them and then we're on to helping more clients so literally we can help way more people yeah so that's kind of for me you know just the feeling of abundance and I wanted, you know, I always had a passion for like real estate and just, I don't know, it's just that feeling that you get when you walk in. And I always like marinated in that feeling. James would be like shooting stuff and I would just like, I would just sit down and be like, this is awesome. Like, I'm going to have that. You know, it's so funny because those, those sort of feelings that get, you know, that you get from that. uh, A lot of the times it's done in photography too. Like as you're searching online, like through homes, like you'll see one home that's taken by, by some guy taking a picture with a cell phone. And you're seeing like other things, like you know, shirts hanging off the door, and you're like, that doesn't seem like a good uh, spot to be. Then you see the nice one that's been edited well, you know, it has a, just it's clean, it's everything about it, and you're like, man, that house looks AJ squared away. That house looks good, honey. What do you think about the house? You like it? All right, let's go take a look. Call the realtor. You know, I mean, a lot of times, sometimes it's the pictures that sell those feelings. 
You know, and that's another thing that I ask whenever I, like I'm dealing with some of my clients. I ask them when they come inside the house, you know, can you imagine yourself spending Christmases here? Can you imagine yourself having a birthday with little Johnny, you know, for your kid? Can you imagine having the Easter, the thanks, you know, Thanksgiving Day feast? Or, can you see that? That's can smart. you can you that's feel smart. that here? And they go, yeah, we really can. We absolutely and wonderful. Yeah. You, know, you know, what's funny you say. That, so when I talk to clients, um, you know, when I did, you know, when I did marketing, um, we still do marketing, we just do it in a different sense. But yeah. um, every decision you make is emotionally based, it if is. you realize that or not. You can kind of justify it and say you're using logic, but you're not. It's all right. emotionally based. Either a good emotion or bad emotion, you're making a decision. So just like you're saying, you're just drawing in emotions. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and you're tugging right. on those cords. Uh, right, and also I'm just painting the picture for them. I'm trying to paint the picture so they can see. But that's realistic. Correct. You're asking them, can you... Make can memories you, here, right? Can you can will this work for y'all's life and what you see happening? You know, y'all want a big backyard because y'all have a whole bunch of family coming over. Can you see, you know, Johnny and uh, you know little little Billy throwing the football back here? Can you? You know, and granted, it's a little bit more. It's, it's curated a little bit better because right now I'm on the show, but for sure. you know, yeah, but, for sure. but but whenever I'm you know trying to facilitate this transaction, it's uh it's done with a little bit more finesse. Correct. You know, some that you kind of mentioned too that are just a little fun fun fact um talking about the photography and stuff like every listing you got to have beautiful photos it's so yes. important but you know one of our one of our because I, I also do marketing for a real estate developer we build uh anywhere from 350 to to 1.5 million dollar homes all throughout houston austin dallas but uh one of our top producing uh sales consultants he he kind of does this thing where he'll only put a certain amount of photos like a lot of realtors a lot of apartments and stuff it's just like infinite photos 20 30 40 photos he'll put like five six five to ten tops photos only that many and like i noticed it because not all of our not all of our sales consultants do that and so you know i, I was doing some training with him just because I'm, I'm running the marketing so like i wanted to be in the head of a sales consultant and see you know i can learn their pitches i can pitch online and he was like because derek when people are flipping through listings they're not looking for the home they want there's a thousand homes there there they're looking to mark these off and say okay i don't want that one i don't want that they're trying to dwindle it down they're not saying I want a hundred homes. They are looking at a hundred and they're trying to mark these off. So he, he kind of explained it like a concept to me that just clicked. He was like, you, you want to give them enough to make them want to come see it, get them there in person. He was like, that's when you make the sale. He was like, you're not going to sell someone a home online. He was like, but you're, you're piquing their interest. And then also on top of that, that's an excellent point. On top of that, uh, you know, whenever you're, whenever I'm sending clients homes, they'll, they'll, they'll tell me X, Y, Z, what they're looking for. I find out what it is. I'm not going to send them all 35 ones that meet the description. I'm going to send them probably about anywhere between six to 10. So they don't get overwhelmed because once it's something called, uh, if I, if I send you too much stuff, I call it, uh, per, uh analysis or no paralysis by analysis. So, I mean, if you start looking at these things over and over, you're like, this one looks good, this one looks good, this one looks good, this one. Oh, I don't know. What's I got to do? So you, so you minimize their selections or your options that you're giving them. And that's just one more thing under the, like, you know, sales kind of 101 type knowledge, I guess, is uh, you know, don't overwhelm them with their options because they don't know what the frick they want half the time. That's why a short you, attention span, yeah. too. Welcome so, to the club, buddy. You know? Oh, you said you do? Oh, I thought you were no. talking about me. I was going to say, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, I get you, man. No, people in, <laughs> <laughs> I understand, bro. People in general, you know? Yeah, more than ever. More than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, you think you go back to uh, pre-internet, you would just, what, what would you what would you send them? You'd probably send them a flyer, maybe, with a home on it? You know, it's, a, it's an ancient art that some people don't know anymore. Uh, most people would use the phone, and they call each other. <laughs> No, nowadays, people are like, oh, no, this is my friend calling. I can't answer it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I'm doing nothing to, right I now. I love talking to clients on mm -hmm. the phone. Me too. I, I love meeting texting. them if I can meet them. I hate email. Mm -hmm. I hate yeah. direct message, anything like that, because there's so much context loss. Right. 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 And then also, you don't, you, you don't get to hear exactly the, you know, the emphasis on how yep. I'm talking. The passion, the right. energy, yep. all of it is lost. You're, in a you're message. preaching to the choir, dude. This is literally stuff we talk about I talk. I talk with, uh, what is it, voice memos. Nice. All day, smart. All day, smart. Yeah. You know, because then you can really understand what, what I'm trying to, you know, what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and, it, and it moves faster too. Yeah, for sure. A lot easier. 
Well, know? and a lot of the times, man, I mean, we are in Houston, Texas. We're probably flying around 90 miles an hour on the freeway, <laughs> trying to text, drive with one knee and shit, looking <laughs> at the road. You know, yeah, hey, buddy, I'll be there in 15. You know, it's not a good idea. You could just be like, hey, I'm here. And and texting for me, it it the, the hardest thing about it to me is it, it, it takes me forever to write a text because I write it and then I try to think of the 10 different ways a person can perceive that text message. Mm -hmm. Because there's like, like we were talking about, there's no context. There's no emphasis, like Evan mm -hmm. said. There's no personality behind it. So like I'll write a text, especially like in relationships or like in business and in like relationships, it's like I'll, I'll write the text and I'll be like, okay, let me think of every different way they could maybe perceive this. Let me rewrite it this way. Let me re read, reads in our audience right now. Read, <laughs> how many times have I asked you to go over something I write, whether it's text or business email? A dozen times a week. <laughs> yes, all the time. 12 or more, baker's dozen. I'm gonna I'm pick up the phone call and, and talk to them. And, and like you said, bro, it's, 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 it's a lost art. It's a yeah, lost art. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she that's... she even said it. She was like, well, "How did y'all start the business? What'd you do?" Pick up the phone. Cold calls. Let's go. Cold, cold calls. Cold calls. Let's go. That I'm, and door knocking. My bad. Yeah, yeah. you're 100 percent right. Cold calls and door knocking for me are the foundation for any person that's trying to, uh, you know, transact something. It's like if you can't make a cold call to someone you've never met before, or knock on a door of some random stranger and just be able to perform, uh, try it because you need to have that experience if you want to do big big deals. It builds uh, resilience and makes you strong and you need you need to have rejection. Yeah, like if right. you're trying to be really strong and especially in sales and and really be successful, you need to go through rejection. Yep. You need people to be like, "What are you selling me or what? No, I'm not interested." All I, right, I, cool. Another no, that means another yes is coming. Yeah. There's a couple neighborhoods I got kicked out of when I was selling books door to door. <laughs> Cops coming around going, "Hey, uh, we here, we we have some uh, some people that gave us a call saying that you're going around and knocking on. Uh, what are you doing? Hey, officer, my name's Evan Layton, and I'm here on an internship from the University of Washington. I only have a couple minutes, so I got to be fast, you know. <laughs> and I try, you know, and and I tell them what I'm doing, and they're like, "Okay, buddy, that's fine, but uh, go ahead and get on." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me let, <laughs> let me ask y'all this. Um, how's how's the dynamic of uh, obviously having a, a, a personal relationship between y'all as well as a business relationship? Kind of touch on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I will say, I, 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 will, I, will start I will start it out and saying that it's not for everybody. Yeah. So, in wow. that, and I will say that, and that's okay, though. Yeah, it that's sure is. That's okay. So, you get, you know, there's a lot of people where, you know, you work your job, and he works his job, and you guys come home, you have your life together, and that's beautiful. That's amazing. But, you know, it's not for everyone, but there is certain certain balances like me and james in the beginning we try we were trying to figure it all out yeah. and trust me when you're trying to start a business run a business run it successfully maintain your relationship it gets overwhelming it does and yeah. gotta say that you both have to be i guess the number one thing you need to be is you both need to have the same mindset and the same goal yeah. You need to be on point because if I'm worried about, oh, I got to have date night every week and we're barely getting by with business, you know, business deals. And, you know, I'm upset about that, but he's trying to get money. That's not going to work. Right. Uh, we need to right. be both business. Got to have really good communication. Yeah. Uh, I was just talking. Huge. I was just talking to uh, uh, some friends of mine yesterday and, uh, and they had car lots probably about like 25, 30 years ago. They had car lots and it was a man and a woman and they were husband and wife and they had the car lot together. The woman was good with dealing with the customers and finding out their needs, what they need to do. And then the man would be like, okay, go grab that Toyota Highlander out back and bring it around and watch, watch this, just, 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 just do it. And they would tell me that they were just this awesome team because they knew each other's strengths and strengths their weaknesses, and weaknesses yeah. right? And they were able to play off them and be able to utilize that for each other. Like, hey, you handle this, okay? You handle this, you ha I got this, you know? And uh, and they they said they worked well together, and uh, you know, 25 years later in a marriage, I mean, what do you want to say? Yeah, you know. That's that's so key because it, it's funny. Even our signs. So I'm a Capricorn. I don't know if you guys are into the astrology. I like. We're it. lions. Yeah. We're telling you're you. Really you're in the lion okay. den. You're in the lion den. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got two Leos up in here. Right. Well, we got yeah, three right. here. Hey, <laughs> oh, man. That's why I like you. Yep. You're Leo too. Yep. Leo oh, gang. That's... What's up, man? What jungle you from, homeboy? Yeah. Uh, what jungle you from, bro? When's your birthday, man? August 9th. August right. 9th. No August shit. August second. What? 
July 25th. Okay. Yeah, okay. man. Yeah. Coming so, out the front. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in the lion's den, so this is even, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is even easier to explain. But that's her, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, like, that line. Okay. You know so, yeah. so you guys know Leo. You know Leo. Leo wants what they want. Capricorn, I don't know if you know a lot about Capricorn. They, I think they downplay Now, Capricorn. I didn't before. Okay. I uh -huh. never dated a Capricorn, yeah. ever. Uh, so I don't yeah. know what I was... Getting yeah. myself into. Yeah. So Capricorn, they like downplay. They say, oh, they just work a lot. They don't like to have fun and this and that. I don't believe in that. I love having fun. I work hard, play hard. But anyway, so Capricorn's also very business oriented, very goal setting, work hard, you know, delayed gratification. So, you know, me and James coming together, we really had to, both of us, put our ego down and really work together. And to be honest, when it comes to business, we could be like, you know, if we had a, a issue that's in our personal life, when we're going to go do business with a client, that's gone. Business. Mm -hmm. It's business time. Yep. It's nothing personal. I'm not going to be salty. He's not going to be salty. We're going to go make the money and take care of our client, give them the and best. And do good business. Yeah. And then we'll figure it out later. Business comes first. Right. And exactly. we'll figure the other stuff out later. And then wow. keep your emotion personal. bullshit out of the transaction, please. It's, it's not personal. Yeah. It's just business. Right. So we've learned to separate that. Yeah. And, and that's really, I think, We're both we very it. strong personalities. Yes. But right. we... We both want the same things. Yeah. You know, we might we might want to tackle a problem in different ways, but um, I've never met a business mind better than Carlos. Wow. Mm. Not even close. Wow. I've been a lot of alpha guys, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I think about that crap. <laughs> She's a strategist. Just some of the things that come out of her mouth, I'm like, wow. I didn't even think about it in that aspect. Not yeah. even close. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and and I take what I do very seriously. Mm -hmm. So I think about all kinds of different problems that we tackle when I'm sleeping, when I'm yeah. playing Call of Duty, when we're watching uh, Netflix. Watch the sniper in the top right corner. But, <laughs> but in the back of my head, I'm like, there's there's a solution to this problem. I know yeah. I can figure this out. Maybe right. I should just listen to her. That's the solution. Right. Huh? It's, 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 it, 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 I was having the same conversation we were talking about. We were talking about math the other day. And uh, it, life is, is basically like math, like in a way like, you 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 get a problem equation or whatever there is a solution there is a solution and there is the correct easiest quickest way the teacher taught you to get to that solution but there's also a hundred other ways to get there and it, that, that's why that's, i hated showing my work well that's just it is I, I even in even like math class like i was i was always really good at math but i a lot of the times even if even if uh even if I didn't remember how, like the exact formula they the teachers taught us, like I knew there was a solution there. So it may take me fucking 30 minutes on the specific problem to get to it, but I would just keep trying until I could figure that path out. And that's so applicable to life. Like you were saying, like, I'll just sit, if there's a, if I'm facing a problem or an obstacle or something in my life, like I'll just, I'll constantly, it'll be back in my head. I'll be having conversations with people and in the back of my head the whole time or playing Call of Duty or fucking whatever. And in the back of my head the whole time, I'm, I'm really just thinking about like, okay, okay, okay. How can I get, how can I come find the right solution? So I think as a Leo too, you know, more, more specifically, like I'm saying as a Leo, you you know, it's, it's, it almost comes down to sometimes an ego thing where you're like, I can figure this yeah. out. You know what I yeah. mean? And you wow. might know the easy route to right. figure the problem but out. But I'm not about to call that person and ask them because they're jerks. <laughs> you know? Because you have that ego side of you. Well, but you're like, it, it, you might, it might be an easy fix, but it, it's, it's temporary. And I'm like, I want to really figure this out. I want to put this to bed, this problem. Mm -hmm. And it might take, and like I wrote a long Instagram post maybe like a year ago about there's always a solution to a problem. It just might not be the solution you want it to be, mm. but you can fix almost any problem. And um, if you really sit down and really think about it, it might be a little bit of an inconvenience, but you can, nothing's unsolvable. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we figured out a lot of things in, in our business by, by really sitting down and really thinking it through and, 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 and kind of going, exploring other areas where it's like, okay, never really gave this consideration, but once you do it, and then once you, kind of go and, 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 and see how that works out, um, it improves your business. Yeah. Because you never, wow. you, it's kind of outside your comfort zone, I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I was, you know, working out earlier and I was listening to Les Brown. He's like my spirit animal, like get me going. And he, he said something that really stayed with me today. He said the path to success is always under construction. Damn. And I was like, wow, that hit me because you think that like, you know, you, 
you think that things are just gonna kind of flow and, and go easy for you, but like you were saying, Derek, you 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 have to have that critical thinking and that problem solving yeah. attitude. And at the same time, you can't lose your shit. You gotta right. keep it all together. Yep. You gotta take care of business. You gotta take care of your personal life. But it's just problem solving and working through and failing forward. You know, yeah. for failing every forward. it's Again. a, a lot that. more failures than wins. Yeah. People just see the wins. You know. Yep. Yep. Um, I want to like applaud y'all too like because as you mentioned like it it is not for everyone uh you know being in a relationship as as well as them being your business partner and everything and you're 100 right it's not for everyone and it's not easy to find someone that you can do it with and that you can find that compatibility with that y'all can compromise and stuff so much respect to y'all for that like absolutely it's it's almost like one in a million appreciate it guys y'all hold on to that well and also because sometimes it can be hard to manage the uh you know, business and personal life at the yeah. same time because it's like you're working all day together and then you come home and, ah, you know, now you're here at the same time. Some It's not, like you said, it's yeah. not for yeah. everybody. Y'all cut off work and then it's like you usually get off work and you get to escape. It's like, all right, we're done with work. So how you're was your hung- day, honey? You hungry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, but like I said, man, sometimes it's that absolute power. You know, it's that, it's that duo. Like I said, you know each other's strengths, you know each other's weaknesses, and you can just pick up wherever they leave off. And it's like, how'd you know that? But thank you. That's so cute. You know? Absolutely. Um, what's what's the funnest thing about what y'all did? Oof. I, I I going back to it. It was it's it's really just uh, making making a a huge difference in a in a business, um, at least for, on the marketing end. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when we moved to Houston, um, that was a huge step for us because yeah. we were just moving as employees. We were moving as entrepreneurs and yeah. it was hard um, being self-employed and then moving here. And then, you know, of course, everything happened that happened last year. So it was it was crazy. So now we're going to we're, we're going to be dealing, you know, uh, with with people that want to move into maybe it's their first apartment or maybe they're upgrading to a better place. And, we, you know, where you live is everything. You know what I mean? That's your safety. That's your home. That's where you're going to build memories. Right. And that's huge. And so we want to help people do that. And so just um, it's just that making making an effect in someone's life. Yeah, right. Producing results. Yeah. And, you know, you know, the tag on that, you know, we're doing that and that's our main focus. But also we we've created a platform, you know, on Instagram where we create content. We work with yeah. brands and we create, um, you know, we share, you know, places to eat in Houston and yeah. collaborate with businesses. And I love doing that because, you know, we're we're creatives. We're true yeah. artists at heart and we love creating and just just bringing all people along for the ride, you know, sharing, you know, when we've started our platforms, YouTube, Instagram, me and James just wanted to share what we like to do. And if people right. want to, you know, vibe with us and follow along, cool. And if we're, you know, we're not for everyone, that's cool too. Yeah. But like just sharing our journey as entrepreneurs, moving to a city and just, just, you know, having fun and sharing positivity. Like for me online, I just want to share good vibes. I want people to see my content. I want them to be happy. I want to give them value. I just want good energy. Well, we think it's right on time with y'all being on the show. If that's what you think, you know, we kind of have a similarity where, you know, we want to put the the good out. We want to put the good vibe out. Well, you know, and, and. what Carla's saying is like uh, the other night we went to this uh, sushi place in Midtown, um, and looked the, delicious, y'all. I was I was watching all stories. That looked amazing. <laughs> oh, it was, it's amazing, oh, guys. It was amazing, and it was a chef himself, you know, cooking for us, and um, the, just the passion that was coming out of him, yeah. and meeting someone like that. I, you know, I wrote in the post just like meeting people that are at a master level of their craft is. Yeah. I love that. I don't even have to be into what you're doing. Right. It's just someone that really is passionate about what they're doing and then getting to meet you guys. You know what I mean? What we do, we get to meet these really interesting people. And yeah. I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just really, because you don't meet people like that all the time. Well and, well, and I was going to say on top of that, I mean, being able to see masters in their craft, you get to also watch excellence in front of you, which, are the, which a lot of people nowadays don't take that same, uh, they don't take pride with having excellence. And you know what? Even if it's not your craft, you can still learn something. 
whether it's recognizing their passion or whether it's re recognizing like their attention to detail or just something mm -hmm. you can still learn from it even if a chef i mean i, I can chef it up in the kitchen but <laughs> chef boy rd no, no way down like Bobby <laughs> chef, boy RD. Okay. chef that call me chef boy rd <laughs> uh, but in no way am i gonna do like an omakase sushi chef prepared these flavors hit the palate this way but when i sat down and tried those the first couple of times with uh with uh I, I did it at Uchi and I think I was a uh, Kato Rabata and stuff and it was is insane like like you said you the, the passion behind the chef and like their attention to detail and all, all the different things like is is amazing so if, yeah if you're asking us what you know what we love about what we do it's that's a big part of it is just meeting you know really cool people yeah Touche. You, you know. Look, we get to meet the coolest people in the world. Yeah. Wait, wait, and, you, and you know what else? And I mean, especially whenever y'all are doing excellent, like we talk about, something that I, I, I kind of like to circle around always is, you know, find out what your gifts are and, and give it back to the world. It's just, you know, your gifts aren't even for you. Your gifts are to help other people. End of story. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know... That's just uh, that's what I gotta say, man. You give it for others, figure it out, and give it back. Something I kind of want to uh, unpackage a little bit too is you you kind of touched uh, based on it. You know, that's what we do. We do marketing. So like I was the second I had met y'all and was talking to y'all and you know I invited y'all on that tour and stuff. Like I knew immediately I was like, yeah, I, I want to have them on the podcast. Um, I'm passionate about marketing uh, in every which way. But and just in case anybody else watching is as well or is interested in the craft, like. Something, you know, we always struggled with too as a business is, you know, we turned down a lot of money because you kind of mentioned it earlier and that's what I want to unpackage is, is like, you, you have to find the right client. Like, I, 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 I'm not necessarily doing it for the money. I'm doing it for the feeling knowing I helped you. Knowing you got those results, knowing you got the reach, knowing you got the conversions. Like, I feel like I fit, you, you could pay me ten thousand dollars but if i feel like i didn't get you your money's worth i feel like i failed in that situation so like it's it's just it's a whole interesting uh like dynamic about about marketing and stuff that people don't realize like it's it, it's not really about the money it's like about about helping people and about like helping a business grow and and seeing those results there's so many times we could have just taken someone's money done something but then you have to meet the as also you have to meet the right people that that have a vision have the vision to like hey try it like this do it like this like y'all were talking about the lady you you had to get her to keep going live consistently every week hey we have to do it we have to do it it was you funny i was i was talking to somebody about a uh, <laughs> about their company that they had right and they had you know xyz cleaning services right and they were like yeah no i'm doing really good about it. i'm doing really good and i was like you know well, also we we do help people sometimes that are you know that they're in business that are trying to get their name out there a little bit more uh she's like oh no i do plenty of the posts and stuff like that and i was like okay real quick you just want to pull up your facebook pull up your business page it's like let's just scroll over real quick to the insights take a look at that scroll up and it was like you know for the past month i think she had reached about 40 people and then I pulled up ours and it was about like, what, 750,000. And I was like, man, this is, this is the difference between quality marketing and, uh, you know, I know y'all are doing y'all's thing. And, and, I, and, I, and I wasn't trying to talk down on her. I was literally trying to solicit our services. I was like, hey, we can help you out, build a community around what you have going on and, uh, you know, get custom made. But you're showing her what's possible. Right. right. You know, right. when she sees 700 and, uh, you know, 45 K for the month, for the month next to her, she's like, no, I get, I, I got 40. Uh, I got 40 people. And then she goes to her post and she's like, that one reached 120. I was like, that was last month, you know, on one post. So, and then she, it was just kind of one of those, like, she was just trying to get out of there after that. <laughs> she just wanted to get away. And I mean, uh, that's it. Get dead on. That's exactly what I was talking about. A lot of some people just don't, don't want that help. Mm -hmm. I mean, I met a, I know a photographer that I kind of was having this discussion with and she was like, uh, you know, I got plenty of business, just word of mouth referrals. I was like, I get that. I get that, you know, you don't have to use social media as much, but it's only going to help. Mm -hmm. now, it doesn't just have to be a portfolio. It can also be a, a lead generator. Right. Or to work with clients that that photographer always wanted to work with. Yeah. You know, if you have a strong yeah. social media um, right. following and real influence, you can work with Nike. Right. You can work with, you know, Ashton Martin. 
um, you know, instead of doing whatever you're doing now, I don't know, there should always be a higher goal. But I think a lot of people just don't understand marketing yeah. and they get uncomfortable. Yes. And so it's really conveying what it is. Yeah. You're selling mm -hmm. attention. Yes, Value. exactly. Oh. And, and I love it. <laughs> Dead I love on. it. And the yeah. power, the power we For have real. nowadays is marketing and, and, and social media. It's not smoke and mirrors anymore. We have statistics. We have data. Well, so I can. I've talked about you know because because where we were in New Mexico was like a small town there, right? Yeah. And you know, there's you can't pull up analytics on a billboard. Right. No. Exactly. Or exactly. a newspaper. Very true. Very true. You know. Uh, and now you have it all within one app. You can sh pull out a phone to someone and say, "How how's yours? The marketing going? <laughs> oh, Here's 40 how's whole mine's people? going? Yeah. Or exactly. you're sending out flyers <laughs> yeah. in the mailbox, how, right. thousands yep. of dollars. Boom. You don't know. And you, you don't even know. Quantify it really. No. No. You no, know, you can't run. You can't retarget from the pixel that you have uh, on the billboard that you're running. It just, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. don't get me started. But no, 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 no. He's no, no, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going bonkers over here right now. We're going to extend this podcast another hour, and we're about to dive in. I really got to hit the bathroom, though, bro. I really got to hit the bathroom. Can we just hold on? I was just kidding. Uh, I guess uh, something we didn't really get to touch on, like, uh, what were some of the biggest struggles y'all faced in, in your entrepreneurial journey? Ooh, I mean, gosh, so many, but <laughs> so many. Honestly, oh, gosh, I'm trying to think back. I mean, I think in the beginning, really just starting out and really just doing it where, you know, just going and saying, we have a vision, let's do it, and just doing it and doing the cold calling, being uncomfortable, walking into business meetings and not really knowing how yes. to do a business what meeting. What you're gonna say. It's funny guys, because you know, I'm, I'm naturally an introvert. And so Carla did the cold calling in, in the beginning, uh -huh. you know, and then I eventually did them. So Carla would do the cold, cold calling and then I would be the one that actually would explain to these business owners, you know, what we could do for them. The yeah. That's you know? called the closing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's called and the closing. A lot of them, you know, after we we, we, we uh, already had a deal and we're working with them, you know, I'm just out of curiosity, like, why'd you guys hire us? Because we really didn't have a lot of work to show them. Yeah. We had like, a couple travel vlogs. Like, right. I don't even know if I would have hired me back. <laughs> to be honest. Right. You right. Know right. Right. I mean? right. To be why'd you take a leap with us? And they were just like, well, you, you know, you were just so passionate and knowledgeable about. Mm what you could do for us. Mm. And I couldn't talk any shit if I knew it couldn't perform. Right. I can't sell you something. Yeah. Because I'm, right. I'm going to look stupid. And we really were in a very small town, you know, especially, you know. Um, and your reputation is everything. Absolutely. Especially in a small town like that. If you get your haircut done funny, that you know, they're talking about it at the barbershop and then they're like, you know what else you did last weekend? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, in that small town, your reputation is everything. Absolutely. You're done. You know, yeah. and yeah, if you, you know, you want to turn every client to a raving fan mm -hmm. yeah. and you're gold. And that was always our goal with everything. I can't take on um, a client if I know I can't get like, what are your expectations? Right, right. And can I exceed them? Yeah. If I can't do that, you're, you're probably not a good fit. Right. You know, and some have expectations that don't even make sense because they don't understand. Well, and also I think they see someone that, that's doing something and they just want to reach out and try to see what the frick is it really that you're doing. Coca-Cola and Nike didn't become Coca-Cola and Nike in six months. Yeah. Right. You know, it took them right. years. I iconic and years. Uh, images behind their 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 logos. Branding. Right. Which which takes a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing's uh, instant about any of this stuff. Right. Yeah, and you know, guys, like, um, you know, a struggle, I guess, too, is like, you know, when we first started out, and you know, first couple years, like. First, you know, not only like selling what we do and working with clients, but then you have to think when you become an, a business owner, entrepreneur, you have to wear the hats of all these other things. Guess what? Yeah. Clients didn't pay. Got to pick right. up the phone. Hey, it's time to collect. So yeah. we had times where we're like, yo, we have to collect or we're not going to make rent or we're not going to be able to buy groceries. Sometimes like, you got to be hard on them. That's too. the real thing. So learning how to wear multiple hats as an entrepreneur and knowing like, you know, maybe I'm not the best at accounting or this. I don't love it, but I have to do it. I can't hire anybody. But that's you just nice figure thing. it out. You go on YouTube, you figure it out. I did my taxes, figure it out. And learning to wear, wear those different hats when you need to mm -hmm. and really being able to do that, I think that really is a huge Thing, you know a learning curve as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur and actually also we always continue to grow and we always pushed ourselves out of side our comfort zone and that's not easy one it's big not easy. one big thing that's helped me and I think maybe it could even help with y'all because I mean it, whenever you think I have to do it all I have to do it all delegation 
delegating tasks out to maybe somebody else that could help free up your time, even if it's an extra, you know, five, six hours worth of stuff. I mean, how much is that? How much is five or six hours of your time worth to you? You may pay somebody else to do that. Absolutely. Granted, figure it out for yourself, but sometimes it's just kind of like, hey, I'm, can you do it? You know, that's why you're here. Can you help me out with that? Something like that. We, yeah. we, we've, we've tried a couple times. Um, sometimes it worked out and sometimes it just didn't because, you know, it's just, uh, I guess just the, the level, like I, I remember listening to a thing Gary Vee did and it was like his, he can't expect from his employees what he expects from himself. Exactly. You can yeah. expect maybe 75%. Tops, yep. that's Tops. even a lot. Mm. Tops, and I that. get it, you know. And so that, that no one's gonna be as passionate or, or meticulous about it as, as you are. There was a media so. company we were working for in in, uh, in New Mexico where we were their contractor for editing, and then we would do the projects that their team couldn't do. And I remember talking to the owner. I loved him. He had like Wolf mm. of Wall Street energy, oh, right? I don't know if he did cocaine, but <laughs> I just I loved him. Like I loved his energy. Yeah. Like I know why he sold so much because it's just, you know what I mean? He just had great energy about him. And um, I remember talking to him on the phone, I actually raised our rate. So he'd pay us monthly for editing. Nice. And then and then we would do the side, whatever projects that they couldn't handle. And he's like, you're making, literally he was like, you're making my team look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> because they're employees. They get what a nice compliment, power. what a nice compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm not gonna go to sleep till it's done. Yeah, literally, I'm exactly. not gonna get, I, I know there's the due date and we have this many projects going on. I have to get those done. I have to right. get them done. Whatever it, just... it takes. And, and, and if somebody was wanting to do this, someone in, uh, in our audience was maybe wanting to work with either of y'all, what's the best way for them to get a hold of y'all? Yep. Like, how's the best way to reach out to y'all? Find out, like, what's, what's, your, what's your IG? What's your social media? Oh, Tell yeah, us about yeah. your tags and everything. Yeah, Probably. WTF Carla. You can follow me. Check me out. At and WTF James. Carla. Yep, on WTF IG. Carla. WTF Carla. Yep. WTF. Yep. yep. And I'm uh, at Sir. James Kale. That's uh, C A L E. It's funny, Dr. my name, uh, I, uh, other than H I have here on my personal Instagram is Sir Real Deal. Sir yeah, Real that. Deal. Sir Real Deal. Uh, that's that. a little brain play. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. Hey, so, absolutely, man. It. Well, I was just going to say that was an excellent episode. It's great. And I appreciate y'all coming on the show and being able to explain y'all's uh, story from one coast to the next coast to the third coast yeah you know <laughs> and, uh, nice. you know i'm glad nice. you ended up in the right spot and uh houston is the home team every time we love we appreciate y'all coming on that we're was, so happy to be amazing. here guys thanks yeah, for absolutely. having us thank absolutely. y'all so much and everybody uh we'll see y'all next week thank, thank y'all for so watching h-town happy hour number one podcast in the world in the world lego baby. lego